Hello, Akharja, Agasfalcha. Hello, my friends, and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You know, I think it's always a good idea to take a look at our lives and ask, what are the philosophies and ideas and values that really are the bedrock upon which we stand, that really underlie our lives? And today I want to tell you about two of mine, and they come directly from Irish tradition. And I think they offer gifts to everyone, and I think they offer particular gifts to creators, and I know that's all of you. So welcome again. My name is Kate Chadbourne, and I'm a singer, storyteller, poet, musician, and I'm also a professor of Irish folklore and language. And this channel is all about bringing those two things together to help us live lives of great joy and creativity, which is the best. So what are these two philosophies? Well, the, the first one is the philosophy or the way of life of Kaleying. So what is a Kaley? A Kaley is a, is a gathering, traditionally uh, a gathering to bring people together for music and dancing, often with some singing, sometimes with recitations, during which people share their party piece. Now, I love that idea that everyone really needs to have a party piece, and it's only one, one or two. You don't have to have a million things in your repertoire, but you've got a couple. One of my great uh, professors, Tommaso Kahasik, he always sang one of two songs anytime we had a Kaylee. And I loved that. We would look forward to them wildly. My own exposure to Kayleeing began when I was 20 years old and I attended a house party at a house on the outskirts of Cork in the south of Ireland. And all of a sudden, here were all these people my own age who were telling stories, who were doing magic tricks, who were singing, who were standing up to dance, who were playing instruments, and I was beguiled. Luckily, I knew a song, so I wasn't caught unawares because, of course, they wanted everyone to offer something to the Kaylee. So I hold a Kaylee every chance I get. In every class I teach at Harvard, there's a Kaylee. Why? Because it brings out the very best in the people. Every single person, not just the person who offers their Kaylee piece, their party piece, but the people who witness it. I've just actually held one in my summer class last week and people were amazed. They were gobsmacked. They were so thrilled to see each other in this new light. I think it's beautiful. I also love the idea that it takes away that sense that only some people are going to share songs or poems or stories. Only some people are entertaining. Only some people speak up. No. Everybody has something to share. In the Kayleys that I offer in my classes and certainly at my home, there's only one rule, which is you need to do the thing. So a long time ago, uh, when I would offer Kayleys, sometimes somebody would come in hauling back in the old days a boom box and say, I want to, I want to share with you my favorite song. And then we would all listen to the boom box and nearly go to sleep because the energy of the Kaylee would flag. Even though it's wonderful to know what somebody's favorite song is, the real excitement is in witnessing someone bring something to us. And again, I have had over the years of offering Kayleys, I have had every kind of song and storytelling and poetry um, and music, but I've also had people uh, dance around the table. I had one time someone stood on her head and recited the 50 states in Irish. Uh, one time I had somebody swallow fire, which was very nerve wracking for me, the teacher. Uh, every sort of thing. Uh, sometimes for the very shy, it's been beautiful when someone just brings a sketchbook, says a few words and hands the book around. So there's room for everybody in Kayleeing. Now, someone asked me a great question recently. What's the history of Kaylee, of this whole idea? And the truth is, I don't know. I have, my suspicion is that people have been gathering for the purpose of sharing things for centuries. I mean, we know about the night visiting 
practices of Ireland, which certainly go back for centuries, uh, where people come to a certain house and spend the evening telling stories and talking and uh, making music and singing. But even further back, really for a couple of millennia, we know about the thing called the Einach, the fair. And we know that that was an important gathering, usually around one of the big uh, holidays, we could call them holy days in the Irish calendar. So perhaps Samhain, which would be the 1st of November, a big, there was traditionally a big fair to celebrate the 1st of November. And it had social, political, and even um, religious implications. So people gathering, this idea again, that we need each other and that it's great fun to gather. So I wanna just say to all of us, how about throwing a Kaylee? How about, and really all you have to do is invite your friends and say, come with a poem, a song, a story, a magic trick, a couple of riddles, anything you want and offer it. And I'll have some lovely drinks and snacks around and that's it, easy. So you could do that seasonally like the ancient Irish did, or you could do it on any occasion. Now, creators, why this matters for you. I think it matters because we are so inspired by each other. Because seeing your, your I'm going to say your brothers and sisters in creativity uh, share what they have made or what they have learned or what, what they have um, decided is important is deeply inspiring and nothing gets you more eager to make your own stuff than to see other people who are joyfully sharing theirs. The other reason I think is again because of that idea of brothers and sisters. I believe all of us creators through time are brothers and sisters. You, you know I always say that like my six-year-old piano student was my much, 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 much younger brother. And, you know, the lady who is 75 and singing beautifully, she is my older sister. Age doesn't matter in all this. We're all brothers and sisters in this. And I think feeling part of that really makes a difference. Uh, I think it feels so good. Just last week, I hosted two wonderful wonderful creators here for a tea party and they brought their guitars and they played me their songs and their exquisite exquisite singing and harmonies and creativity i am still high this week so the whole philosophy of kayleen is very simple get together and share things it's a lot more fun than standing around just gabbing with a drink in your hand uh, it can change it can really uplift you and it can really bring you back to a feeling of connection with people and a feeling of connection with creativity and tradition. So I can't say enough about it. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure I'll be talking more about it with you, but just to say, think about, I'm just going to give you that dare. Host a Kaylee, tell us what you think. So the second uh, philosophy that means the world to me is falcha. I say it to you every week and it's welcome. I define this as the Irish art of hospitality. And I sort of, of course it is uh, literal hospitality, like at the tea party, you know, I baked some very nice gluten-free scones and I set a beautiful table and that kind of hospitality. But even more, it is the hospitality of your heart. It is a general affectionate welcome to what you're finding around you especially to other people, just, yes, you're welcome. I think it matters tremendously. And you know, in this world where the temperature has been rising in a literal sense, but also in a metaphorical sense, that, that it seems that there's a lot of upset. I'll leave it there. But when we can walk through the world and offer falcha, offer just, hi, fellow human creature, uh, I'm glad to see you. We don't have to say that, but that's the feeling. That does so much good in the world. We all need to know that we belong. We all need to know that we're welcome. And I think just sort of as that as an operating principle 
is a wonderful thing. So you can use your, your superpower of falcha on these special occasions, throw a keili, throw a party, throw a picnic. Um, I think more of this than less, honestly, and make it easy, make it easy. All I did last week is set a beautiful table, which I love doing, bake some scones and I made some homemade strawberry jam and I brewed some tea. It was easy and I still feel it this week and so marvelous. So creators, I want to offer you this idea that we can offer falcha to our own inspiration. I say that because so many times I have thought, oh, that's nothing. You know, I might have a little, a little tug on the line of my inspiration, like Virginia Woolf talked about wanting to uh, write something, how she, she was, this was a metaphor, but she was fishing in the stream and she felt a little bit of a tug, but when she pulled it up, it was just a minnow and she threw it back. Well, I actually, I love Virginia Woolf, but I'm going to disagree with the idea behind that. I actually think a lot of times we pull it up and it looks like a minnow and it actually is a whale. If we'll give it a chance, if we feed it, if we pay some attention to it, we often find that it's a, a very rare and beautiful fish. But where I have been, and maybe you have been at times quick to throw it back into the stream and say, oh, that's nothing. So I want to say, what if instead we offered falcha to the small idea and the big idea, all the ideas, like, for, and what, did, what can that look like? You can think about it. But one thing I think is really important is just jot it down somewhere. Just give it or make a quick voice recording or make a quick sketch or whatever your particular art is, but make a gesture that says, I'm welcoming this in some way, even in the most, um, in the most fundamental way welcome that idea. And then more generally, I want to ask, we could say this to ourselves, how can I be a, a genial host to that creative spark that I carry inside myself? How can I be a good host to my artistry? I'm going to just leave that there. I'd love it if you're interested in this question, which I think is a very fruitful question. I think it can open up a lot. I'd love to hear what you have to say. How could you be an even more generous and genial host to your own creativity and to your own inspiration? Please share. I want to thank all of you so very much. I am loving the conversations we're having. I'm so grateful to you for taking the time to write. I just appreciate it so much. I really feel like we are creating this little warm corner of the internet uh, of just nice people who are creative and cool and open and eager. And I love that. So yes, please leave a comment of, as always, I love your, I so appreciate every like. They, they really are like food and drink to me. And also please subscribe if you haven't. I know many of you have, but if you haven't, join us. It's so nice to be together. One last thing, I do actually have, if you're interested in Falcha, I have a little free resource. It's on my website. I'll put a link in the, I'll make a first comment. Uh, it's a little video and a little cheat sheet about practicing the Irish art of hospitality, Falcha, in a lot of different ways. I think it can make our lives so beautiful. So thank you as ever, Aharja. I hope this is a week in which you play host to your own artistry and also perhaps in which you consider planning and hosting a Kaylee on any scale. Mine last week, two friends, another one last week, dozen uh, um, students. See what you think. See what you think. Let's bring more of this artistry and fun to the world. Have a wonderful week. Slana Karja. Goodbye for now.